The ulna consists of a proximal extremity, shaft, and distal extremity. The proximal extremity articulates with the humerus to form the ulnal humeral joint and the radius to form the proximal radial ulnar joint. Distally, it also articulates with the radius forming the distal radial ulnar joint but does not articulate with the carpal bones. The upper extremity consists of two curved processes, the orlecranon and the coronoid. It also consists of two articular cavities, the trochlear notch and the radio notch. In this video, we're going to use a left bone. The olecranon is the most superior aspect of the ulna. The posterior surface is covered by a bursa, and it is possible to get bursitis in this area. The superior surface has a rough area, known as the tuberosity of the olecranon, and is the insertion site of the triceps brachii tendon. The ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris originates from the medial surface of the olecranon, and the anconius muscle inserts into the lateral surface. The coronoid process projects anterior and is continuous with the shaft. Its medial surface provides origin for the flexor digitorum superficialis and is also the insertion site for the ulnar collateral ligament. This area is known as the sublime tubercle. The lateral surface contains an articular cavity known as the radial notch. Inferior to the coronoid process is a rough area known as the ulnar tuberosity, which is the insertion of the brachialis muscle. The pronator teres originates medial to the insertion of the brachialis muscle. The trochlear notch is a large concave depression that is covered by articular cartilage, which articulates with the trochlea of the humerus to form part of the elbow joint. The head of the radius articulates with the radial notch of the ulna. The anterior and posterior margins of the radial notch provide attachment for the annular ligament. The shaft decreases in size as it continues distally. The shaft is triangular in cross-section in the proximal area and becomes more circular in its distal portion. The shaft consists of three borders that form three surfaces. This is the anterior border. The posterior border. And the interosseous border. The anterior border begins at the medial aspect of the coronoid process and extends distally to the styloid process. The distal one-fourth of the anterior border has a rough area known as a pronator ridge and provides attachment for the pronator quadratus. The posterior border begins at the olecranon and ends at the styloid process. The interosseous membrane begins at the supinator crest. It is located at the lateral aspect of the ulna and serves as the attachment site of the interosseous membrane. This triangular area below the radial notch is the supinator fossa and is the origin of the supinator muscle. The anterior surface is located between the anterior and interosseous borders. The proximal half of the anterior surface is slightly concave. The origin of the flexor digitorum profundus covers almost one half to three fourths of the proximal aspect of the anterior surface. The distal one fourth of the anterior surface is covered by the origin of the pronator quadratus. Also located on the anterior surface is a nutrient foramen. The posterior surface is located between the posterior and interosseous borders. The anconius muscle attaches at the proximal aspect of the posterior surface. 
At the mid portion of the posterior surface, there is a central longitudinal ridge known as a perpendicular line and serves as the attachment of the common aponeurosis for the flexor digitorum profundus, the extensor carpi onerus, and flexor carpi onerus. Lateral to the perpendicular line is the origin of several muscles. Starting proximally, there is a supinator muscle, then the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis longus, and distally, the extensor indices. The medial surface is located between the medial and the posterior borders. The medial surface flares out at the end to form the head of the ulna. The proximal three-fourths of the medial surface is covered by the origin of the flexor digitorum profundus. The flexor digitorum profundus has a very large origin. It originates from the proximal three-fourths of the anterior and medial surfaces. The distal extremity consists of the head and the styloid process. The head is covered in hyaline cartilage at the distal and lateral ends. The distal end articulates with the fibrocartilaginous disc and therefore does not directly articulate with the carpal bones. The lateral end is known as the articular circumference and it articulates with the ulnar notch of the radius to form the distal radial ulnar joint. Both the proximal and distal radial ulnar joints are synovial joints of the pivot variety. Recall that the head of the radius is located at the proximal extremity, whereas the head of the ulna is located at the distal extremity. The styloid process is a distal most projection of the ulna. It is a non-articular prominence located at the posterior medial aspect of the bone and serves as the attachment of the distal ulnar collateral ligament. Lateral to the styloid process, there is a groove that allows passage for the tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris.